Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever. Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello podcast land. Hello guys. Hey, you need to pray for me because... I don't know what's going on, but I had some pizza today from one of the local pizzerias down the road by my house. And I started getting some chest pains or something. I have no idea. I'm I'm okay a little bit now, but let me see what my wife said. <clears throat> she said something all right. So yes, I developed some chest pains for whatever reason that is. I have no idea why, but I developed some chest pains and I had a little heartburn. So yeah, it's not a good situation, but hey, we're here. We're live. And like I always say, if the Lord's going to take me home, it's going to be either preaching the word at my church that I'm creating or at a church or here live on a show with you. Who knows, one day I might go to be with God live on the show. Never know. I hope I hope it is live on the show going to be with God because you know why? Because I wanna I wanna be able to get up there and do but be doing for him down here. I wanna be doing for him while I'm I while I am on the show. So let me get this closed real quick for just a second. Hold on. There you go. It's my invention, the door closer, 2000. It's just a curtain rod thing. One last time to see what she had to say. So with that being said, <clears throat> hey, how are you guys doing today? What's up in your lives? You're live, live, live. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to be live. Let me see what she had to say real quick. I might have misread something. So, nope, I didn't read something. Let's see what we got going on for our statistics real quick. And then we get into our sh- the rest of our show. Here we go. For this current week, we're at 2,135 for the month. For the current week, we are at 235. Not bad. So, hey, we're doing it. You guys are helping us do it. So, hey, thank you guys for doing that with us. We can't have a show without you guys. So hey, let's do it. Let's 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 do it this way. Sorry about my stuttering there for a second. Let's do it this way. Hey, let's, I got an idea. Let's get into a few brief announcements. Take it away, hon. Thank you, Mr. TGIF, and here's for our announcements. On Monday nights, we have Mr. TGIF with the message. On Wednesdays, we have Outside the Classroom Wednesdays with Dr. Scott Mullen. 
On Thursdays, we have Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays with Pastor Lance and Ernissa Travis. Saturdays are Worship Saturdays with Mr. TGIF and a few gospel artists. Keep your ears peeled. We are looking and working on more words and worship for you, our beloved listeners. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. TGIF, and enjoy our next episode. Thank you there, hon. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, that's short, and it, it, it still bugs me to this day. I'm, I'm never going to get used to how short the announcements are. They're like, what, um, how long? They're like 30, 36 seconds of announcements when I could go for two hours some days with our announcements. But anyways, <clears throat> with that being said, let's get into our first song on the show. And our main song is Through the Fire by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live. Enjoy Through the Fire. There you go, guys. That was an instrumental song by Dr. Tom Ray called Through the Fire. Let's get into Pastor Lance and Ornissa Travis's message in this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Enjoy the message. Oh, my God. I just want you to continue to worship the Lord. Come on, as you lift your hands and as you open your mouth, I want you to continue to worship Him. Thank you for your presence, Father. 
Thank you for your life-giving presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing presence. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence that brings liberty, that brings freedom, that brings deliverance. Thank you for your presence, for in your presence there is fullness of joy. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are changed in your presence. Oh, we bless you today. We honor you, Lord God. Oh, we lift you up. We extol you, oh God. Be exalted in this place. Oh, glory be to God. Come on, this is not the time for mourning. This is not the time, glory to God, for being despondent. Thank you, Lord, but this is the time to rejoice, to worship the living God, and be glad in him. Be glad in him. Be glad in him. Worship and be glad in him. Hallelujah, for it is in him that we live. It's in him that we move and have our being. Yeah, God. Oh, we give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Father, have your way now. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would speak expressly to your people. Father, speak so we will know what the mind of the Lord is. We will know, Father, what it is you are saying to us where you are directing us. Speak, God. Hallelujah. The Lord, you've already told us that this is not the end, but it's only the beginning. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what's next on heaven's agenda. Thank you, Lord God. What's next? that announces your kingdom mandate. Thank you. Lord, prepare us for what it is you have for us. You've already prepared it. Now, Lord, prepare us for it. That we will receive and walk in the grace, the anointing, the blessing, the calling. Prepare us Equip us to walk in it. We rebuke fear. We rebuke doubt. We rebuke worry and unbelief. You have no part here. Oh yeah, that's right. Fear is certainly not our future. But God, help us to trust you in a way we've never trusted you before. Father, help us to trust you where it is most uncomfortable and inconvenient. Help us, Lord. Help us, God, to trust you. But, Lord, your track record is good with us. Our history with you is perfect. And even your word declares that you never disappoint. You've never let us down. You've never failed us. You've never deceived us. You've never led us into harm or danger. But we thank you, God, that ahead of us there is victory. There is blessing. There is triumph. Ahead of us there is prosperity. And ahead of us there is more grace. Thank you for more grace. Hallelujah. Grace and peace are multiplied. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, word my mouth. Let the meditation of my heart even be acceptable in your sight. For, Lord, you are my strength. You are my portion. You are my redeemer. We thank you. We 
ask all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Bless you. Bless you, every one of you. Bless you. I am uh, so thankful to God for so many things. And uh, obviously the word has gotten out because I see a, a number of you and it, it really encourages my heart. And uh, it really blesses me uh, to see all of you. I am especially happy and uh, encouraged to see my wife here. Amen. Uh, I am. I am. I really am. Amen. And you know, um, it is so important to do just as the Word of God instructs us uh, to walk by faith and not by sight. Because how many know that if you walk by sight, you'll often be discouraged. You, you'll often uh, be stuck on what was. You'll often be disappointed because the things that you see can cause you to be disappointed. The things that you see can even cause you to get in your feelings and uh, just really clown and show out. Uh, I'm a witness. <laughs> Glory to God. But I, I thank God for not only the, the instruction, but even how the Holy Spirit teaches and trains us how to walk by faith. Yeah. Amen. Uh, because how many know that he is the one who not only makes the call, but gives us direction, prepares us, equips us, and empowers us to do uh, as he pleases, his bidding. Uh, we don't talk like that anymore because we think that uh, we're the ones that puts everything together and we uh, order and instruct everything and that we call all the shots and we know everything that's going on. But uh, it is my experience that oftentimes God will direct us in ways where we don't have a clue what the next step is. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But uh, that's why I've learned to trust him for the next step. Uh, because I don't know. I don't know what the next step is. And uh, the Bible says that uh, um, a man can uh, order his ways. He can make his plans, uh, rather. But that the Lord orders his steps. Uh, God is the one who calls for the next step. So that's why my prayer consistently has been, Lord, what's next? Lord, what is the next step? What do I do next? Where do we go next? That's consistently been my prayer. And um, it's an important prayer to pray. Because knowing that there is next, knowing that God has something more, uh, and I've said this before, even Satan himself will present things to you. How many know that the devil will bless you too? <laughs> to make sure that you do his will. Uh, but I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning to become more attuned to and familiar with the voice of the Lord. I want to ask you to turn with me to uh, Philippians chapter 3, and I'm, I just want to say some things here to encourage you and to uh, hopefully inspire you and to motivate you today. Um, it's interesting, even with the statement I just made about uh, how the, the devil, and the Bible even said that uh, he appears as an angel of light. Uh, he can look real good. Uh, but uh, he has hell's agenda. Come on now. Uh, but the thing I love about God is that God always uh, operates with heaven's agenda. Always. Always. Um, God never misses it. He never gets off track. Uh, he never loses it. Uh, but he always, he's always. And, and the thing that I love about God is that even when there are things that happen, uh, because how many know that life happens? Oh, yeah. Even when there are things that happen that are uncomfortable, that are confusing, you know, 
that are uh, disarming, uh, that could even uh, seem to be in disarray. Uh, things that even appear to be chaotic, that God himself uh, will manifest not only his presence, but give direction. Because from the very beginning, it was God who caused light to shine in the darkness. And it was God who spoke to chaos and brought order to it. And the worlds were framed when he spoke. So in my faith and with my faith, I'm trusting God to speak. Somebody say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Uh, even where there seems to be. Uh, darkness, And I'm saying all those things and obviously alluding to a point because uh, as it's been uh, well known or well documented uh, that this is the last uh, EMI service that we're having. Um, and uh, it, it, yeah, in one hand it is sad, but uh, that's another side of me that's very excited. Um, I don't know about you, but there is as a part of me that's really excited. Um, and, and it's interesting, um, I, I've been around for a while, and I've heard people say, you know, when certain ministries have closed or gone in a different direction, and they say, well, you know, that was my baby. Well, yeah, well, the baby in your house grew up in had to leave. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, your baby don't stay there forever. And there's a problem if you got a 50-year-old child still in your house. Okay, y'all. I lost some of y'all right there. My God, I lost somebody right there. There's a problem. They can't take care of themselves at 35. And you still got the milk bottle. So even the baby grows up and has a lead. Because change happens. And it happens all the time. It is inevitable. It is going to take place. And that's why I want to go to Philippians chapter 3. I want to begin reading uh, from verse 12 and read all the way down there through um, verse 16. Not a whole lot of verses. But change always happens. It does. Um, how many of you are glad that God did not leave you in the stage of adolescence as you were growing up? Right, I saw a few hands. Maybe some folk didn't want to let go of adolescence. <laughs> There's even a psychological term for that. And, and, and there was even a rap group by the same name, uh, Arrested Development. Y'all ever heard that before? And some folks said, I never heard that, but you heard the rap group, did you? <laughs> Arrested Development. Because uh, you're stuck at 13 when you're 25. Um, and uh, I'm saying that because I, I want to be sensitive to where God is and where God is taking us and what's next. And not get stuck on what was. And that applies to a whole lot of it. It's not just ministry, but even in life. Because you get some folk that were in relationship, but the relationship broke and was over with, and they're still stuck there. And stuck so much till they take everything and everybody else through life, holding on to that same relationship and all of the things that were in that relationship. But look at somebody and say, it's time to move on. It's time to move on. Yeah, yeah. That's really the message for the day. It's time to move on. I don't know if y'all used to watch the Martin Lawrence show, but I used to watch him and I uh, just did something to me when he would say, get the stepping. <laughs> In life, you got to learn how to get the stepping. Because it's not just the terrible things that we are charged to forget and let go of. But it's even the good things you got to let go of. Now I'm probably way ahead of myself all the way down the street and around the block, but that's all right. 
Verse 12 says in Philippians chapter 3, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on. Come on, say that. I press on. Now say, I'm pressing on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. I don't consider myself to have laid hold. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Come on, say, forgetting those things. Which are behind and reaching forward to those things uh, which are ahead. I press toward the goal. Say that with me. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal it, even this for you. Come on, tell somebody, look at your neighbor and say, God will reveal it to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Now, some of you probably already know what I'm about to do next. Uh, this is uh, just, uh, I really love the Passion Translation of the Bible. I want to read this, how it reads from the Passion Translation. I'm going to share a few more words with you. And I know it may be hard for you to believe, but we're going to be getting out shortly. Unless the Spirit of the Lord just uh, disrupts and intervenes and uh, he is welcome to do so. But from the 12th verse of Philippians 3 in the Passion Translation, it says, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing. But I run with passion into his abundance. Say his abundance. So that I may reach for the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. And I love this verse because it says that I'm reaching forward with a passion into his abundance. I'm not reaching at an empty thing. I'm not reaching and guessing. I'm not reaching and hoping something would happen. But I'm reaching into his abundance. Which means that God has a whole lot more for me. Oh, yes, he does. The blessings of God, the promises of God, the direction of God takes us to a place of abundance. He takes us from a little to a lot. He takes us from just enough to more than enough. I'm reaching passionately into his abundance. Yes, yes. All right. There's something ahead of me that's far more than what I have right now. See, we get stuck because we look at the little bit that we have now and say, this is all that there is, and how am I going to get more? And not understanding that if you keep reaching forward into him, he's going to take you to the place of abundance. So that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make his own. And in uh, Romans chapter 8, Paul said it this way. He says, uh, all things work together for good to those who are called of God, uh, to those who love God, I'm sorry, and to those who are the called according to his purpose, which says that God causes everything to work together for our good because we love him and because he's invested so much in us. And with what God's invested in you, he hasn't done it for waste, but he did it so that his purpose can be realized in your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God was putting all of his grace on a sure thing. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, God says, you are a sure thing. Yeah, hallelujah. So, he says in verse 13 here, he says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. Lord, help us, Jesus. Because how many times do we get caught up into trying to do it ourselves? Making it happen ourselves. 
using our intellect, using our strength, using our experience, using our knowledge. Using what we know. But he says here, glory to God, uh, that I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. I myself have not taken control of it. However, I do have one compelling focus. Look at somebody else and say, you've got to get focused. There's one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. Look at the imagery here. Look at the picture that Paul is painting here. He said, I forget all of the past and fasten my heart to the future. He's saying that I'm letting go of one thing and I'm grabbing with everything I got to lock on to what is ahead of me. Yeah. You know what's amazing and where we struggle the most is when we do the opposite. We do the reverse. We lock on to what's in the past. Yeah. And we fasten ourselves into what was. And we lose sight of what's in the future. Anybody identify with that? We can't see what's in the future because we're too busy holding on to what was in the past. But he said, glory to God, he said the compelling focus that I have is that I'm forgetting all of the past. I'm forgetting about how I was hurt. I'm forgetting about how I was abused. I'm forgetting about how I was rejected. I'm forgetting about how I was disappointed. I'm forgetting about uh, how they hurt my feelings. I'm forgetting about the things that went on that were not good. And guess what? Not only am I forgetting about those things, but I'm also forgetting about the victories. Huh? Wait a minute, that's good. Yes, it's good, but it was bad then. I told y'all before, God is like Janet Jackson. And constantly asks the question, what have you done for me? Yeah. Thank you, Elder. I knew I wasn't the only one that knew that song, but glory to God. He asked the question, what have you done for me lately? What's going on right now? What are you sacrificing now? What are you reaching for? What are you training for? What are you receiving? What revelations have you gotten recently? Yes, God gave me a great revelation back in 1993. Look at somebody say, that was then. I'm sure that some things were opened up to you that really blessed your life 10, 15 years ago. But God wants to give instruction now. Yes. Say now. now. God wants to give you direction now. now. He wants to give you direction now for what's ahead of you. In order to give direction now for what's ahead, you got to let go of what was and latch on to, lock on to it. Somebody said that you even got to have bulldog faith. Anybody ever heard the term before? Yeah. You know what bulldog faith is? It is just what uh, the image of that dog implies. If you know anything about a bulldog, when it attacks and it bites something, it locks its jaws. It literally locks its jaws. And the only way you can get him a loose, if, he, if you haven't trained him, is by doing some harm, hurting him, shooting him. Breaking his jaw, otherwise his jaws will not loosen. They're locked into the thing that it bites. Are y'all getting the visual? You're getting the picture? And that's the way your faith has got to be. Put your faith in what God said about you. Put your faith in what God said about your future. Put your faith in what God uh, had the prophet to speak over your life. And lock on to it like a bulldog. Tell somebody, look at him right in the eye and say, you got to lock into it like a bulldog. Now I think I'm going to calm down a little bit because I'm preaching way harder than y'all saying amen. I'm preaching better than y'all Lord help me Jesus. Because that really does something to me. Because see sometimes there's been times in life I've gotten distracted. 
Uh, there's been times in life I've gotten discouraged. But this same analogy, when I locked on to something, it didn't matter what happened. It didn't matter what came in life. It didn't matter what people said. When I locked on to something, I was able to hold and maintain it until what God said manifested. Tell somebody again, you got to lock on to it. So, the compelling focus that I have is that I forget all the past as I, and forget all of the past, it says here. Forget all of the past. Forget all of the past. Forget all of the past. Come on, tell somebody, you got to forget all of that stuff. Because see, it's some stuff that's in your memory banks that's really messing you up. There's some stuff that you remember that affects, glory to God, how you treat people. There's things that are locked up in there that causes you to not believe God until you see it. Amen. But tell somebody else, you got to let that go too. You got to let it go. Let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. And I fasten my heart to the future instead. And actually, I'm going to stop right there because to, to me, that is so profound. And it really speaks to the heart of what I believe God wanted to say here today. Forgetting all of the past. Come on, say all. All of the past. And we were really honest. And we really told the truth. There's a lot of things that we have let go of. And we let them stay in the past. But there are certain things that we really start. I don't know if I can forget this. I don't know if I can let go of this. I don't know if I can forget this. But as you're watching me by live stream, and those of you in the house, please understand that that is the thing that keeps you from getting your miracle. That is the thing that keeps you from progressing into what's next. Because you can't forget. And, and I don't really believe the implication here is that it totally leaves your memory blank. But where that thing does not become your compelling focus. Where that thing is not the thing you get stuck on. Come on, y'all help me preach again and look at somebody and tell them, what are you stuck on? What has you stuck? The compelling focus that I have is that I forget all of the past. I know I sound like a broken record, but I also know that the more that I say it, the more it registers. Especially when you're talking about forget all of the past. All of it. I say that also because, you know, I've heard several things after it was announced that this would be the last day of my service. And some people were disappointed. They were disheartened. And, and the thing, and, and consistently, the only thing the Holy Spirit would allow me to say is, yeah, but God's got something else. Yeah. There's another door that's being opened. God's taking us to the next thing. Because I understood that if I got stuck there and I got upset and I got in my feelings, <laughs> then me and everybody else is in the same bag of mess. But look at somebody and tell them the devil is a liar. Because we're moving forward. Come on, tell somebody, I'm moving on. It's time to move on. It's time to get to stepping. Because there's a miracle that's waiting for me. There's a miracle waiting for my family. There's a There's a miracle waiting for me and my wife. God's got something we've never seen. Can't afford to get stuck. Can't afford to stay in one place. 
And you've heard it before. God's got houses you didn't build. For you. There's some money he wants to put in your bank account. But you got to understand he don't want to do it for complaining, bickering folk. God's not trying to put miracle money in your account and you cussing folk out. Lord Jesus, help me. Listen, God's got a miracle for you. But you got to let go of what was. Forgetting all of the past. Other thing I learned about this, and I am closing, is that I can't worry about anybody else not getting it. I can't worry about anybody else being stuck. Now, I'm like Joshua. He said, that's for me and my house. Yeah, I'm going to strive, you know, with mine. I'm, I am. I'm going to strive. You know, we go, but all y'all, listen, you don't want to believe it. You don't want to get this. That's between you and God. And it's being put out there. I don't I don't think, it, and with all this hollering and loud I am and raising my voice and everything, I don't think it could be made any more plain and clear. It's time to get to stepping. No, not stepping on them. Oh, I started to say something to you. Not, <laughs> That's close. <laughs> that almost let one slip. <laughs> Praise be to God. <laughs> now I forgot my thought. <laughs> it's time to get to stepping. Not stepping away from them folks that got on your nerves or hurt your feelings, but stepping away from the past to the future. Stepping away from being broke to being having more than enough. Stepping into what is natural and normal to what is supernatural. Stepping into God's supernatural provision. Which means that it's something you couldn't do yourself because it's beyond nature. How many in here besides me want the supernatural to manifest in your life? Come on, lift your voice and shout, I want the supernatural. Come on, tell them, I want a supernatural God to manifest supernaturally in my natural situation. Because, you know, people say all the time, well, I'm just only human. I'm just natural. Yes, I'm natural. I'm a natural man having a human experience. But I want the supernatural. Because when God moves supernaturally, everybody can see that this was something God did. I don't know about you, I'm getting happy right now. Because how about folk who know all your stuff? They know where you've been. They know how tore up you've been. They know how much trouble you had. They know how much, uh, amen, fear was on you. They know all your situation at home. But all of a sudden it turned around. All of a sudden it works for your good. Supernatural power. And I'm telling you, God will do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Yes, he will. Just when folk think they got you pegged. Come on now. Preach that thing. And they see God move. Come on. Yes. Come on, look at somebody and prophesy to it. Tell them God's getting ready to move in your life. Tell them God's about to move in your situation. And look at somebody else and tell them, guess what? He's moving right now. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, he is. I don't care what you see. I don't care how ugly it looks. I don't care how fearful you have been. Hallelujah. If you put your trust in the Lord, he'll make manifest his mighty move in your life. Lift your voice and shout now. now. Right now, Lord. Hallelujah. It's mine now. 
It's mine now. Yeah, it's been rough, but it's mine now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. And so folks think that it ain't coming. The blessing ain't coming. The miracle ain't coming just because it's been rough. But let me tell you something. When that mother carried that baby, the delivery was not easy. The delivery wasn't funny at all. The delivery caused you a whole lot of pain. Oh, but when the baby come, it was party time. When the baby came, come on, look at somebody and tell them the baby's about to come. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Yeah, you are about to come forth. You are about to come forth. Thank you, Lord. You've been held down too long. You've been held back too long. You've been looked over too long. Yes. You've been passed over too long. Uh, they said you were unworthy too long. But how many know there's only one that makes us worthy? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's the thing I love so much about God. is so good, y'all. I'm telling you. Because, see, the thing I experienced in church all my years is that people will look you up and down and size you up and say, yeah, well, ain't nothing to that. And then here comes God. I love it when I see people ride down the road and they're driving in the Mercedes and the back of it says, God did it. Come on, somebody, if you take a look at your situation right now, and if you for one second can look at where God's taking you, lift your voice and shout, God did it. Because I don't know about you. I don't see myself where I am all the time. This is not the way my life is going to end. This is not my epitaph. This is not the story and the way it is. But God's got better. God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. Healing in my body. Deliverance in my soul. Demons expelled and casted out. God did it. Money everywhere. God did it. So it's time for next. How many of you have had enough of the past? You <laughs> have.
bless you. I know what you're going through is hurtful, but I swear I'm going to bless you. I know they're talking about you, but I swear I'm going to bless you. And if God says, I swear I'm going to bless you, it's good as done. You might as well start shouting now. Come on, put your name in there. And he says, I swear I'm going to bless you. But that's something to get happy about now. Stop praising him now. Start giving him glory now. Because it's I told you this is not the end. It's only the beginning. God had to get us to this point so he can get us to the next point. And we trip because stuff come to an end. No, it's coming to an end because there's something brand new. Hallelujah, that's just ahead of you. There's something brand new that's weighing upon you. There's Something that will bless your life, bless your bloodline, bless your family tree, bless your children, bless your marriage that you've never seen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Lord, how do you cut this off? <laughs> so I want you to do something weird. As a profession of your faith. I want you to lift your voice and shout with me with your faith. I'm not talking about what you see. I'm not talking about what you have in your hand, but I'm talking about with your faith and shout, Lord, Lord I'm ready. I thank you for your words. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking into our hearts and even in our lives. And Father, I pray that these words spoken today would continue to reverberate and resound over and over and over and over in our hearing, over and over and over in our soul, over and over and over. Until we've forgotten about everything in the past and latched on to the future with bulldog faith. Thank you for these that are here. Lord, I thank you so much for their faithfulness. I thank you, Father. I thank you for those that have sacrificed. Thank you for those, Lord, that have come and that are here, even when they didn't want to be the king. Thank you for those who came for both services, and some, all three of them. And I just speak blessing over their lives. The blessing of the Lord be on you. The blessing of the Lord that makes us rich and adds no sorrow with it. The blessing of God be upon you as he equips you for what is next. And Father, we thank you so much. And unto you, Lord, we give all praises, glory, and honor. For we ask all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Prepare ourselves for communion. And I, I'm an emotional person. I, I have no problem breaking down. That don't, that don't make me shame.
but it just really touches my heart when I consider you all and your faithfulness and your love for God and your love for the work of the Lord um, and knowing the various capacities that you serve in and how did you keep going and you keep giving and you keep committing you got to know that good is coming your way you got to know that blessings are coming because of your never say die don't quit attitude Hallelujah. Blessing is assuredly on its way. So God bless you. And as we're preparing ourselves for communion, uh, I just want to say to you that are watching live stream, we thank God so much for you. And I certainly want to shout out Brother Andre Lida. My God. I thank God for this brother who watches every single Sunday. And every single Sunday, he says, Pastor Lance, we love you. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. Amen. Tell Amen. the wife I said hello, and I love her. Uh, and uh, tell Pastor Eric. He constantly uh, writes that. And I just thank God for Brother Andre uh, Lida, uh, who watches every week. We praise God for you, uh, sir. And uh, thank God for all those that have watched uh, the two plus years that we've served in this ministry. And uh, just thanking God for giving us the grace uh, to continue and to maintain and uh, as he equips and prepares us for what is next. Well, God bless you. God keep you. Again, we thank God for you. Please keep us in your prayers. And uh, some kind of way, we're going to announce to you what does come next. And uh, remember that we love you to life. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. In Jesus' name, God bless. There you go, guys. That was Pastor Lance and Ornissa Travis's message on this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Let's get into some more praise and worship. Our next song on the list is unto you by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live and Joy. Unto you.
thank you tonight, God, that you have visited us in this place. And we pray that you would magnify your name, God, for you're worthy of this praise and this glory. There you go, guys. That was Unto You by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live. Let's get into our next song, and it is entitled Tears Are Our Language by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy Tears Are Our Language. tears to flow when things have not turned out the way that you had planned but God won't forget you all his promises are true tears are a language that God God sees the tears of a broken hearted soul. He sees your tears and he hears them when they fall. God weeps along with man and takes in. Tears are a language that God understands. Tears are a language God understands. Cool, man. Cool, man. That was Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell's Tears Are a Language. We're going to play the next song. Then we're going to pray. We're going to play our last one. Our next song on the list is One Voice by None Other Than the K. Dennis Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy One Voice. One voice, one cross. Glorify 
There you go, guys. That was one voice by none other than the Cadianus Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Let's get into our prayer and then we'll end our show, our last song. Lord, I'm going to come back before you. We thank you, Lord. We, you're God and God alone that you're having your way in this ministry. I pray, Lord, that you are blessing everyone at the sound of my voice. Give them their heart's desires as long as they not be what? Selfish. Lord, heal them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, most predictive, multiple sclerosis. Heal my Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that are not bad no more. Heal my sister from being sick, from strep throat. And heal my wife from the flood that's coming up. And Lord, heal them from disease that contracted themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. Why? When you heal them, you show your mercy, power, and your grace. I'm reminded of a scripture that says you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door. It says you passed right straight through the door because you're all spirit at that moment. He said, Thomas. Look at my hands, thrust your finger on my side, and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? He got on his knees and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But it doesn't stop there. It says, Blessed are those who have not seen it still believe. So show them now, Lord, so they come back needing absolutely anything. They won't have to say, I have to see it to believe. Because your word again, Lord, says, and they'll say, if you did it then, you'll do it again. Because your word again, Lord, says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Boom, boom, boom. Amen, doom, doom, doom. Amen, amen, amen. With that being said, let's get into our last song, and it is not untitled by unknown artists. It is Clean, Clean Heart by my guest. On the show, Pastor Evangelist W. Smith. Enjoy Clean, Clean Heart.
There you go, guys. That was Clean, Clean Heart by my guest on the show, <clears throat> Pastor Evangelist Elite Smith. That does conclude our show for today. Two things to remind you. Number one, download that app. It is absolutely 100% phenomenal. You can do all these wonderful, fabulous things straight from that app. Also, ask your Alexa device. Say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. She'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show. Straight from your Alexa devices. You also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our show for today. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust in the Lord in all your ways. Two, lean into your own understandings. And three, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Thank you and good night.